I love taking walks in places that are usually empty. The isolation and the serene ambience is something I always enjoy, especially during the hectic days of my high school exams. I would often sleep early and wake up even earlier, sometimes as early as 3 a.m., and just venture out to some desolate road before I start the activities of the day. I woke up one morning at around 2.15 a.m. and naturally decided to spend the early hours taking a nice refreshing walk. I got out of bed, got ready and went on my way. It was a quiet morning and the sky was still pitch black. I'd have thought there were dark clouds overhead since I couldn't see any stars, but then I didn't hear any thunder or feel droplets of rain. Soon I found myself on a relatively calm walk down a very empty and quiet road. Usually I'd hear animals bark or at least growl as I walked down that same road other mornings. But that day it was so quiet I could hear a pin drop. The eerie silence made me shiver a bit, even though it wasn't that cold. There was something different about the air that day. It felt unusually oppressive for a late summer morning. I glanced up at the towering buildings, their silhouettes cutting through the night sky like a giant sentinel. That's when I saw her, a woman, standing motionless on top of an under-constructed building, her figure outlined against a yellow tinge of a loosely hanging light bulb. Something felt off, an unease settling in the pit of my stomach. As I approached the building, the chilling wind seemed to whisper cautionary tales in my ear, but I couldn't turn back now. I had to see if she was okay. I stepped into the empty lobby, the echoes of my footsteps intensifying the eerie stillness. Finally, I reached the rooftop, my breath heavy with anticipation, and there she stood. As motionless as a statue, she seemed normal. She was wearing pajamas, her hair unkempt as if she had just gotten out of bed. What struck me was that, even then, she did not move. Not a flinch, a twitch. It seemed like she wasn't even breathing. Don't do it, I roared, my voice tearing through the silence of the night. Let's talk it out. Step away from the edge. No response. It was as if she couldn't even hear me. Miss, I... I stepped forward, intending on pulling her back to safety, but before I could, she had turned around to look at me, as if registering my presence for the first time. A tired face looked back at me, but there was something off about the way she just stared. All normal, except for the vacant, dead-eyed gaze that seemed to peer straight into my soul. I stepped back. Not sure what to say when my foot collided on something, sending me tumbling backwards as I fell to the ground. I was about to say something, but I couldn't remember what. All I know was when I did stand back up, I was alone on that roof, with nothing but the whistle of a chilling breeze to keep me company. I thought of it the whole way back home, the tired, soulless face that I saw that morning. Needless to say, I don't go out on walks as much, at least not on such ungodly hours. I tried to look her up, that woman, but I never found anyone who resembled that face that had seared itself into my mind. Every now and then I pass by that road, and it seems the building, for all intents and purposes, have been abandoned. I did some research on the place, but there wasn't a lot about the owners. I found out that the building was scheduled to be demolished and that the owners had discontinued it. I have heard rumors, however, about how the place was haunted. Many construction workers reported seeing strange figures and hearing voices when they worked there. To this day, I find myself thinking about that night, wondering about the strange events that conspired on that empty, abandoned building.